going to have a look at this little Tavoli um, audio iPad or iPal um, amplifier and built in tuner by the looks of it. This belongs to a friend of mine and he, uh, he's been using it for a couple of years and it started to develop a large, sort of loud buzzing sound and he sent it back to uh, the manufacturers and they they fixed it for a while apparently but it's come back again so he's asked me to have a look at it um, and the first thing I thought was if it was a loud buzz it's possibly a power supply failure or maybe even an internal smoothing cap's gone open circuit but we'll try it on this uh, he hasn't got the original power supply which is a shame because that would have been more useful because we could have diagnosed the fault if it was the power supply straight away so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it off a uh, switch mode power supply I've got here so we can expect a bit of sort of like digital noise but it should work fairly well now I don't know if the original power supply was regulated or not I am using a regulated power supply uh, and it's the power requirements for this device are 12 volts at 500 milliamps well, I, can, I think this is about 12 volts 300 milliamps so that will be absolutely fine all it's got to do is run the uh, amplifier we're not running at any volume so let's plug it in and see what we get. No awful noises there. Um, uh, our special guest is Duncan Galloway. Okay, so the ribs can be smashed and the organs cut out. A noisy on hides pot or tuning capacitor. Our skulls are filled. Oh, she and. Pretty awful, have a look at that. Panic. From Holland, I seem to remember. Quite an impressive sound. Ongoing supporters. Okay to play on the best roller coasters on So what I'm hoping this is more than like to be um, a VCO, so it's gonna have a variable tuning uh, it's not gonna have a variable tuning capacitor, it's gonna have a resistor. So that should be easy enough to fix. We can stick some uh, switch cleaner in there. But there's no sign of this buzzing that he's talking about. So I think we'll leave it on for a while. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to whip the back off it and we'll run some contact cleaner through it, through the um, volume control. I'm interested to see what the build quality of these things are like inside. I don't expect them to be particularly nice. Size screwdriver. And these companies have been around for um, quite a few years now, probably 10 to 15 years, and they've done some really nice sort of bedside radios and things like that. Um, they've got a lovely sound. Uh, you know, they've obviously uh, done a lot of research into cabinet design and equalisation of the amplifier to make the sound sound really good. You know, for their size. It's the battery pack that's obviously. Uh, Totally flat. Battery's quite old, 2007 in there, so that battery probably is uh, well past it. And they're probably, what are they? No, it's nickel metal hydrides, they're not a lithium battery or anything, so that's probably that battery's probably on the way out. Now, of course, if this battery is acting as a smoothening uh, capacitor, that could be why you're getting a lot of noise. And he's got some of these super deep recessed screws. I might have to get my ridiculously large screwdrivers out. Look at that for a screwdriver. So I'll go and do this from next door under these screws. they're not tamper proof screws that's nice actually they usually all these companies seem to be going over to these sort of tamper proof screws who can't actually work on the unit but these aren't these are conventional posies so that's good so hopefully things should come apart now got no hidden screws anywhere let's get those screws out Okay. 
easy. Right, now what have we got? Pretty straightforward. Okay, we've got a power amp for our stage here. Looks like we've got a regulator on board here. Uh, smooth link caps using pretty cheap, nasty components. It's a shame, isn't it? You think you, you spend this extra money on all this stuff and you get decent quality components. There's, there's no Rubicons or Nitticons or anything like that. They're, these are all these uh, Koshin capacitors. Pretty horrible quality, really. Circuit board soldering is hmm, nothing special. The board's pretty dirty. Uh, but I suppose it's it's all there. Chinese speaker. Pretty cheap and nasty really, to be honest with you. Bit of a disappointment. And it is using a tuning capacitor unfortunately, so that's going to be a bit difficult to to uh, to do anything with that. Uh, the best thing I can do is give you a squirt out some air duster. It's surprising actually that the tuning capacitor has become noisy because the um, the box is totally sealed. There's no, it's not an infinite, it's a, not a re reflex cabinet, it's an infinite baffle, so it's, the, it's basically airtight. And it's clearly very noisy when you tune. So we'll give it a squirt with some air dust just so we can get anything in between the tuning plates and maybe quieten it down a bit, but I don't hold out a lot of hope. And short of stripping the whole thing down and repairing it. can't use contact cleaner on uh, things like this because it's conductive and if it leaves a film behind then you stall the you can stall the local oscillator on the on the tuner. Okay so yeah it's it's pretty straightforward you can see here this is the this is the, obviously one the local oscillator and the FM tuning. And it's got an AM section as well. We've got some blue ceramic filters down here. I don't know if you can see those. Probably for the uh, FM 10.7 uh, IF amplifier and everything's all sort of glued off. I mean, it's, it's the circuit's not bad. I mean, it's they've obviously spent a bit of time on sort of looks like a two stage IF, at least two stage IF on the FM. But uh, short from that, can't really see anything wrong with it that would possibly cause this intermittent buzzing. So I'm suggesting that it's probably. More than likely, the uh, the power supply was the problem. It has got a two. Th what value is this? It's a Twenty-two hundred microfarad capacitor across the supply. And it's soldered in well. Uh, the only other thing I will check because it, the other thing it could be is um, a bad connection from the uh, to the amplifier. This that board looks like the RF section. This looks like the power amplifier, and uh, maybe it's got some, yeah, power amplifier is on the bottom and power supply and this top board is just the FM and AM uh, section of it. So it could be a bare, capac a bare uh, connection to that and it all looks like it's all plugged in nicely. So I think we'll put it, jack it back together. Uh, I won't put the screws in it for the minute. We'll put it back together and we'll uh, power it up and leave it running for a while and see what happens but it's certainly starting to look like power supply now it does actually hum at, well I suppose I've got it on AM no it's actually and playing it. totally quiet with a switch mode power supply Christo says Matt will you yeah. oh it's quite in the tuning down we spend more per student Okay, that sounds reasonable. It's just what I will do is we'll just quickly check the um, alignment of the dial just to see what that's like. Uh, so, what I need to do is find my aerials. Where are they? Can't find my aerials anywhere. Where have they gone? This one. Just check the scale calibration. So we set the signal generator to 100 megahertz on. 
heaven built. Scale calibration is not great, as you can see there. Um, I don't know if the owner wants it adjusted. Let's just check it for linearity. Uh, 88 megs. Okay, it's just it just needs bringing around slightly, really. Uh, 108. It's not particularly linear. 108 is spot on, but it's out a bit at the lower frequency, so I don't think it's worth bothering with. But um, it certainly seems to be working okay, so it looks like the power supply was the problem. Which was put quite impressive little sensitivity in the set, considering it's only working on the uh, an internal aerial. Uh, I suppose this aerial is the uh, main aerial. But things like uh, just had a another ladybird land on me. The, the place seems to be full of ladybirds. I don't know what it is. But they're just um, full of these little ladybirds coming in everywhere. So you're trying to hatch. And they stink, these things. They, I, don't know what, I don't know what they smell of, but they smell of sort of like a... Almost like green vegetation. It's not an unpleasant smell, but they, I don't know if it's a defence mechanism, but... Cool, they're going to have bloody pongs. I'm going to chuck him outside. They won't be very happy. Anyway... Now, I think that really sums up this little Travoli thing. It's, it seems to be working fine. It looks like it was a power supply problem. Uh, quite a common mistake. People automatically think that if something goes wrong like this, it's going to be the uh, electronics inside when it can be caught onto the power supply with a poor, um, poor regulation or something like that. But it's working fine now, and uh, thanks for watching.